What's going on guys? Justin here and welcome back to our eighth example video following our course on proof writing. Now today's example video is going to be on multisets. So with our introduction out of the way, let's go ahead and get into our first problem. So our first problem says how many positive integers less than 500 are divisible by two or three? So we want, want to find integers between zero and 500 that are divisible by two and three. So let's go ahead and define two sets here. A will be the set divisible by two and b will be the set divisible by three. So let's go ahead and write out our definition for a. So a will equal all integers n, which is in the set one all the way up to 499 because we are strictly less than 500, where two divides n. And b similarly will be all n, which is a member of the set one, two, 499, such that three divides n. Great, so what we're looking for is the cardinality of A union B. And we have a formula for that that says that this is equal to the cardinality of A plus the cardinality of B minus the cardinality of A intersect B. And this is because if you take the union, you will double count the intersection. So we're gonna subtract one copy of that intersection off. So let's start by finding the cardinality of A. So the cardinality of A is simply going to be all the even numbers from 1 to 499. That's super easy to calculate. That's going to be equal to 249. To calculate the cardinality of B, we're simply going to want to divide 499 by 3. So to find the cardinality of B, that's going to equal 499 divided by 3. And that's going to give us 166.3 but we're going to round down to just 166 because the 167th multiple of three is not included in our set here. So there'll be 166 elements in set B. So that gives us our cardinality of A and our cardinality of B. Next, we need to find our cardinality of A intersect B, and that's just going to be all multiples of six. We're gonna find this in a similar manner to the way that we found the cardinality of B, and that's going to be to divide 499 by six. So the cardinality of the set containing all multiples of six from one to 499 is going to be 83, which means that the cardinality of A intersect B is going to be equal to 83. So now that we have our last piece, we can go ahead and plug this into the formula and get our final answer. So we'll get 249 plus 166 minus 83. So let's see what that is. That's going to be equal to 332. Great. So let's get into the next problem. Okay. So our second problem says, suppose there are 20 people in a class. One of these members is named Sam and the other is named Alicia. How many ways can we form a three-person study group that contains Sam or Alicia, but not both? So we're gonna do this by calculating all three-person study groups that contain St Sam and all three-person study groups that contain Alicia, and then we're gonna add both of them. Great, so the number of three-person study groups we can form that contain Sam is 18 choose two. Great, and that's because out of our 20 people in the class, two of them are Sam and Alicia. So we're gonna remove those from our total 20, and we're gonna start by picking Sam for a three-person group, which means we only need to choose two members from the remaining 18, so long as we remove Alicia from that pool as we will not be picking Alicia. Similarly, the number of three-person study groups that contain Alicia will also be 18 choose two. Now we will not need to subtract anything off from our intersection here as we have intentionally picked these two sets to be disjoint, which means the intersection will be empty. And that's because for groups containing Sam, we have intentionally excluded Alicia, and for groups containing Alicia, we have intentionally excluded Sam. So all the top groups have Sam and don't have Alicia, and all the bottom groups have Alicia and don't have Sam, which means that their intersection will be empty. That means that the total number of ways we can form these groups will just be 18 choose two, plus 18 choose two, and that's gonna be equal to 306. Great, so let's get into the next problem. So for this problem, we're gonna to wanna to find how many ways we can buy four sodas from a vending machine that has five flavors. And right away, we wanna identify that this is choosing a four element multi-set from a nine element set. And the reason it's a multi-set is because you could buy four of the same soda, or you could buy two of the same soda and two of a different soda, or you could buy two of one soda and one of two different sodas, etc. And because we have to account for the fact that we could have multiple entries that are the same, we have to use a multi-set. So we actually have a formula for choosing a k element multi-set from an, from an n element set, and that is as follows. So the total number of ways you can choose a k element multi-set from an n element set is n 
plus k minus 1, choose k. And in this case, our k is going to be equal to 4, and our n is going to be equal to 9. So when we plug that into our formula, we will get that we have 9 plus 4 minus 1, choose 4. Different ways to choose these four sodas, which will be equal to 12, choose 4, which is equal to 495 different ways. Great. So let's go ahead and get into our next problem. So for this problem, we want to find how many non-negative integer solutions there are to x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4 plus x5 is equal to 90. So to start, let's pick maybe what's the most natural solution to this, which is that we let x1 equal x2, which equals x3, x4, etc., all the way up to x5, which equals 18 so where all the x's are equal. Next, let me go ahead and draw the star and line diagram for this solution. Great, so we can see that once we draw out our star line diagram for this, we will have 90 stars and four lines separating each of those stars for a total of 94 elements. Now, because we have 90 stars and no restricting conditions on our x's one through five, we have 90 different positions for these lines. So the total number of non-negative integer solutions will be given by 94 choose 90, as we are taking a 90 element multiset from a five element set. And 94 choose 90 is equal to 3,049,501. Great, so let's go ahead and get into our last problem. So for our last problem, we wanna know how many solutions are there to the equation x plus y plus z is equal to 100, where x is greater than or equal to zero, y is greater than or equal to 10, and z is greater than or equal to 20. Now, for this problem, we have to deal with conditions for our x, y, and z. For our x, we have exactly what we want, which is just that it is a non-negative integer. So we need to manipulate our y and our z a little bit to make this solution process very simple. So we're gonna do that by using two different substitutions. So we're gonna let y equal y not plus 10, and then we're gonna let our z equal z not plus 20. We're gonna go ahead and substitute these into our original equation. So that will give us x plus y not plus 10 plus z not plus 20 is equal to 100. And doing these substitutions will adjust our equation to account for our conditions for y and z to limit our number of solutions. So let's go ahead and make those substitutions into our equation. So we will have x plus y not plus 10 plus z not plus 20 is equal to 100. And so we can go ahead and subtract that 10 and 20 over and we will get x plus y not plus z naught is equal to 70. Now just like the last problem, we could generate our own solution to this problem and draw out our star and line diagram to illustrate how this goes, but we already have a formula for this and I already demonstrated pretty well how that went last time. So let's go ahead and recognize here that we will be taking a 70 element multiset from a three element set, which means our total number of solutions is going to be 70 plus 3 minus 1, choose 70, which is equal to 72, choose 70. And that is equal to 2,556 different possible solutions to this equation. So that finishes this last problem off, and that is a good place to stop.